Introduction. Learn how celebrities train to help you succeed. Admit it, have you ever had a keen sense of envy when you listened to outstanding musicians play or watched Olympic champions perform? Did it seem unfair to you that the higher powers, or fate, or a simple set of genes made these people, not you, brilliant, rewarding such outstanding abilities? This book is about how, after years of research, scientists have proven that none of us are born with brilliant or gifted supernatural talents. On the contrary, talented people work hard and hard, honing their skills in endless conscious training. So, what do you have to do to achieve outstanding results? What role does our brain play in this process? Let's get to the bottom of this. You will find out in the following insights. How a regular guy learned to memorize 82-digit numbers. How the profession of driver changes the structure of the brain. Why Austrian composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart wasn't a genius. Insight 1. Start training from an early age and you will develop any skills. It is known that Austrian composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart could hear any musical note, regardless of the musical instrument on which it was played. Have you ever wondered why Mozart had such outstanding musical abilities? Or how some people remember a sequence of pi characters as if it were a regular phone number? We used to think that genius is an innate feature or a gift of fate. In fact, everyone can develop any, even the most outstanding skills. It's only a matter of proper training. Let's go back to Mozart. His absolute hearing, which allowed him to determine the height of any musical note on the move, is extremely rare, one in 10,000. In the past, absolute hearing was considered innate. Only recent research has shown that it isn't. In 2014, Japanese psychologist Ayako Sakakabara set up an experiment with a group of 24 children from 2 to 6 years. He tried to teach them how to identify 14 different musical chords by hearing. For several months, the children played these chords on the piano several times a day. When the children learned how to do this, Sakakabara checked to see if they could hear the height of individual notes. By the end of the experiment, all the children could accurately determine the notes they played. In other words, they were able to develop absolute hearing. Therefore, with the right training, any person can develop an absolute hearing. Of course, this will require precise instructions and hard work and to start better at an early age, up to six years. But the most important thing for us is that under favorable conditions, the development of absolute hearing is available to everyone. There is no such skill that a person cannot develop in himself, no matter what field of activity he belongs to, because our brain is responsible for everything. In the next chapters, we will tell you about it. Insight 2. Train not only the body, but also the brain. London is a huge city with thousands of streets that fancifully intersect each other. The city of 8.5 million people is flooded with thousands of restaurants, residential complexes, shops, offices, institutions and organizations. If you suddenly have a desire to become a London taxi driver, you will have to make sense of this maze. Seems completely impossible, doesn't it? But there are people who can handle harder tasks. Like a human body that gets stronger from exercise, our brain has the ability to change because of exercise. Neurophysiologist Eleanor Maguire of University College London in 2000 presented the results of an experiment confirming this hypothesis. In the course of the study, she compared the brains of London taxi drivers and ordinary city dwellers. It turns out that one part of the brain, the hippocampus, is bigger for taxi drivers. The hippocampus is responsible for orientation in space and helps to memorize the terrain. And drivers with more experience had bigger hippocampus than beginners. To make sure that the results of the scientific research are correct and that the large hippocampus is not an innate feature of the taxi drivers selected for the experiment, Maguire explored two other groups of people, those who had just started working in London taxis and those who had nothing to do with the profession. All the members of the groups underwent brain scans. On the first survey, no differences in hippocampus size were found between the two groups. Four years later, when Maguire did her test again, it turned out that the hippocampus size of taxi drivers was larger than at the primary control. Consequently, there is a direct correlation between the ability to navigate the terrain and the size of the hippocampus. As a result of purposeful training, this part of the brain can increase in size, providing a person with the ability to cope with a task, orientation in space, which he or she was powerless before. So, now we know that training can change the human brain. 
but does training affect thinking or how we perceive the world around us? Insight 3. Develop mental representations that are stored in long-term memory, and you will learn to cope with any complex tasks. When mentioning the words, Mona Lisa, it is likely that you will come to mind a famous portrait of a mysteriously smiling woman painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Your brain literally, sees, this picture. This is mental representation. Mental representation is like a detailed picture of an object or event. It's a kind of mental representation stored in our brain for a long time and processed by it. Mental representations can change under certain influences, both external and internal. In a broad sense, mental representations allow us to overcome the limitations that short-term memory imposes on our mental abilities. It can be very useful for developing a skill. We need a short-term memory for a variety of purposes. Without it, we couldn't remember words to understand a sentence we just read. But in order to learn the whole language, you need to connect long-term memory capabilities. Long-term memory can store vocabulary and all the rules, without which language knowledge is impossible. Mental representations are playing the leading role in this process. They are the ones stored in our long-term memory that allow us to react quickly to a word, movement, state. It was a mental representation that reminded you that the Mona Lisa is a famous portrait, that's why you don't have to teach what it is every time you hear a mention of it. Mental representations are very important to improve training efficiency. Of course, it takes years of intensive training to become an expert in any business, be it taxis in London or chess. Only training can help develop the ability to detail mental representations of situations and actions that are relevant to a particular activity. Let's take, for instance, baseball. The overwhelming majority of fans have only superficial mental representations of real situations faced by professional baseball players. In training, professional players take a part, master and develop the most complex mental representations of all possible situations in the game the trajectory of the ball and its speed, angle and strength of the bat. That's why when a player takes a kick, he can predict with a tenth of a second accuracy how fast the ball will fly, whether it will be twisted and what the swing of his bat should be. Therefore, it is practice that brings all skills to perfection. But not all types of training work. Next, you will learn what kind of training helps to develop various skills. Insight 4. Set goals, train, work and get feedback consciously, it will help to achieve outstanding results. Do you think professional musicians, athletes, scientists and entrepreneurs succeeded overnight? On the contrary, they worked hard and hard, using the method of conscious practice to achieve success. This method includes setting clear and specific goals, full concentration, leaving the comfort zone and constant feedback. To better understand how the conscious practice method works, let's look at the experiment that Anders Ericsson conducted in 1970. He invited a student named Steve from a private university and the Carnegie Mellon Research Center to participate in the experiment to memorize a sequence of numbers. Numbers were read aloud at one-second intervals. The sequence was constantly increasing. On average, most people have no problem remembering no more than seven digits. Steve was no exception. But after many training sessions, Steve was able to memorize chains of 82 digits. How did he do it? First, Steve had clear and specific goals, to remember more numbers than the previous day. Secondly, throughout the experiment, he remained extremely focused. Besides, Steve was forcing himself out of his comfort zone. He was constantly pushing himself to overcome the previous level, and wanted to surpass his previous achievements. Once he was able to memorize a 28-digit sequence, he was asked to memorize another sequence of the same length. Then was the higher bar 29 digits. And did the same every time. And finally, Steve got feedback. He was informed by the organizers of the experiment about how he performed each step of the task. The last point is crucial. After all, how can you develop if no one tells you how well you are doing? It doesn't matter whether you learn the sonata or understand the grammar of German, the main thing is to know if you are doing it right. Through conscious practice, you can learn a variety of skills and abilities. But conscious practice is only a step towards a higher goal. You will learn about this in the next chapter. Insight 5. Arm yourself with specialist knowledge to be successful. Now we know that conscious practice is very important for developing unique abilities. But what distinguishes a person with outstanding abilities from a true genius? The latter achieve everything through targeted practice. 
For any training to become a conscious one, two conditions are necessary. First, this practice should be applied to a well-researched area. Make sure that there are already experts in this field whose level of ability is far superior to that of beginners. Secondly, for a focused practice, you will definitely need a coach or mentor who is able to help you achieve heights in practice. Let's take the music as an example. It is not a secret that over the last centuries the level of musicians playing has increased significantly. Modern virtuosos do things that their predecessors never even dreamed of. Today, the level of technique and performing skills is high everywhere, so it's easy to find a great teacher, an expert in his work, quite easily. A musician with a mastery of the instrument knows the necessary techniques to help his students master the game themselves at the highest level. Targeted practice involves active collaboration between teacher and pupil. It is based not only on the teacher's knowledge, but also involves the student himself, motivating him to find his own methods. Exactly this alliance is the thing that helps to achieve perfection in the end. A good teacher should lay the foundation of development for his student, introduce the basic concepts, facts, and all the achievements in the field of study. For example, you are going to do a high jump. With a great coach, you will not have to ask which place to choose for training and how to get the best result. Therefore, you will not have to look for answers to these long-studied questions yourself. If any skill can be mastered with the help of enhanced training under the guidance of the best coach, then why is it still talked about such a concept as talent? Insight 6. Practice focused training to achieve outstanding results. Now you know that you can develop any skills through hard work. But aren't some abilities just the result of good genetics or a kind of gift from above? Many continue to think that outstanding people have had abilities from birth, especially when it comes to famous historical figures who began to show their gift inexplicably from an early age. What other explanations could there be for this kind of extraordinary ability? For example, most biographers point to the fact that Mozart began composing at the age of six, and only two years later, he had already written his first symphony. The innate gift here seems to be the most logical explanation of how a young child could achieve so much in such a short period. But in this example, the innate talent is not yet obvious. On the contrary, the brilliant Mozart's incredible abilities were most likely the result of purposeful practice. There is a version that Mozart was not at all as talented as they say he was when he was a child. Some facts suggest that the first works attributed to the eight-year-old Mozart were written by his father, Leopold Mozart, a composer who began teaching his son from an early age. While Mozart worked hard to become a brilliant composer, he did not write any outstanding musical works. It was only after a decade of honing his abilities through focused practice that he became famous as a composer. There is the same explanation for many other talented people. Their path to success is never short. Years of purposeful pursuits are passing, thanks to which they push the limits of the possibilities of their brain by creating developed mental representations. Conclusion. Main idea. Inborn talent does not play a big role in success. Targeted, conscious training plays a decisive role in developing various skills and abilities in any field of activity. By fully dedicating yourself to the systematic execution of the right training, you can succeed in any field.